What's up, everybody? Welcome to our new Dark Souls 2 weekly show. Praise the sun. I'm Ryan Telgenik. Uh, Lorenzo Valoria. And uh, Lorenzo, I just got to play through the very first hour of the game. You did? Oh my god, it was awesome. Yeah. Was so, it tough? Uh, well, of course. I mean, we're talking about the Dark Souls series here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you played an hour through. Yeah, uh, very first hour of the game. Uh, well, I, you know, of course, your progress is going to vary depending on how good you are at it. Uh, I'm okay. I made it all the way through Dark Souls, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'll tell you, that game was the best review experience I've ever had, having to go into it completely blind. I had absolutely no guides or anything to follow. Yeah. Really fun, and of course, if you're going to play the Soul series at all, I highly, highly recommend you go into it completely blind, because yeah. that way you're forced to figure things out, and it's by far the most experienced way to do it. So uh, let's does, talk about this first. Yeah. How does Dark Souls 2 start out? Like so, uh, the other games had like a little bit of a tutorial, a bot, big yeah. boss would kill you in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Dark Souls 2 kind of kicks off with this, uh, a, a cutscene pretty similar, I would say, to the first. I mean, a lot of different things are happening in it. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's kind of just like this old woman is narrating it. And she's telling you, like, you know, you're, you're pretty much doomed. Uh, and it's funny because the at the end of the cinematic, your character leaps off of a chasm into a bottomless pit in an attempt to kill himself. Right, it's because he's like, just a tortured yeah. soul kind of right. Yeah, and yeah. she's like, oh, you, you're doomed to, a, and she's you know explaining the fact that you're a cursed one, that you're undead, that you are doomed forever right. to re, be reborn over and over again no matter what happens. And so it kind of kicks off with this very gloomy uh, cutscene. And at the end, you jump off the cliff, and then you and you kind of wake up in this in this place. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember, Dark Souls kicked you off in this tutorial, right? Right. So it's like kind of teaching you how to swing a sword and block with your shield, right? And it, you you learned like some of the special moves, like you could learn how to kick things off of cliffs and stuff. Yeah, and then, or thrust and yeah. do and and one of my favorite additions to Dark Souls, that little running, a little hop. That you right, 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 right. Uh, right. So, but actually, in Dark Souls Two, there is no tutorial. After the cutscene, you're dropped off into the very first area with absolutely zero equipment. You don't have a weapon, you don't have a shield, and you're kind of just running around, and if you try and attack, you're just like punching. Uh, I actually didn't find any enemies until about 15 or 20 minutes in, which was a, a, which was a little bit surprising to me. Yeah, but you were telling me before that the, the enemies at the beginning, they're not really these uh, skinny yeah. skeleton, like, like <laughs> right. malnourished jail guys. They're yeah, these because, giant monsters now. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Uh, so you fight those kind of guys in the original Dark Souls during the tutorial stage. Mm -hmm. But here you're kind of dropped off. You walk forward a little ways. And, you know, uh, because I only had an hour to play, uh, I didn't have a ton of time to try and explore every possible path. Right. Uh, I don't really have a good sense right now as to... Uh, how open the very beginning is, um, but there were some very obvious tells that were kind of drawing you forward. So I was walking through this dark forest area. It looked a lot like the Dark Root Basin from Dark Souls. Right. And there's a light shining in this cave a little bit farther up. So I started walking toward that because obviously uh, that made sense to me at the time. And, <laughs> and there's a house there and you walk inside the house and there's a bunch of old grandmas inside. Like right. they're all wearing these red cloaks. And, it, and one of them starts speaking and you recognize her very quickly as the narrator from uh, the, the cutscene in so, the intro. So it sounds like the, they've kind of toned down the action a little bit and they're kind of hyping up, like bringing more story into the, the yeah. gameplay. Well, yeah, well, you know, because when anybody talks about the Soul series, uh, whether that be Demon Souls or Dark Souls, a lot of the times what you hear is, oh my God, that game's really hard. But I think what people typically mean is when they're, if they like the game, they're saying, oh, it's really difficult, but it's fair in such a way that I'm able to learn from what's happening and then capitalize on uh, learning patterns and stuff like that. So it's really, this series is so much about the reward that comes from uh, overcoming these immense obstacles. Mm -hmm. And I think what the Dark Souls 2 intro did really, really well that impressed me was uh, it's building a great amount of tension because I know I expect this game to be hard right? and I'm seeing nothing. So now I'm getting a little worried that I'm going to run into something awful which you do pretty much right away. Now, right. after talking to the old grandmas, they kind of give me like a starting item, right? Like right. you can kind of pick uh, what you wanted to start with in Dark Souls. Now you can do the same here. Uh, and I took the human effigy, which is um, the item that restores you to human form from Hollow. Right, and then uh, Dark Souls, the original uh, game, you, you got to choose these special items and that would give you bonus exactly. uh, like stats and stuff. So you could pick a ring and that would like, Either uh, generate like more mana or something, or you know, peer, uh, 
by through time would uh, heal you up. Or yeah, something and like uh, yeah. and plus what I liked about that too was you would never know what some of those items were going to do. Sometimes they would unlock secret things for right, you right. much later on. But uh, yeah, after uh, after the grandmas and picking the item, then you kind of walking a little forward and you find what is the equivalent of like the Nexus in Demon Souls or the Farling Shrine in Dark Souls. It's kind of like this really bright, sunny town that's mm -hmm. like on this cliff. Uh, overseeing the ocean, so you look out and see all this water. It's very, very pretty, and uh, and the town is actually pretty collapsed. Like a lot of the buildings seem like they've been there for a long time, and they're just kind of dilapidated. So that's kind of like your home base, then. Yeah, right? and then it's got NPCs in there that'll that'll sell you items for souls and uh, just kind of talk to you about the kind of cryptic lore stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, I kind of picked a random direction and walked off because, you know, there seemed to be three or four different paths. Uh, I had no idea where I was going, and uh, I went down one. It led me through this like sewer grate, and still by this point, I'm 15 or 20 minutes in, haven't seen a single enemy. And uh, I'm in the sewer, and I find a lever to uh, open a gate. I go through there, and then this is when I finally find the first enemy that you mentioned was right. not a scrawny uh, zombie, but in fact, a giant uh, stone statue. Again, a lot, not quite as big as the ones from uh, the Dark Root Basin, like much farther in in Dark Souls but very big and yeah. very intimidating. So Dark Souls 2 just isn't playing games. They just no. throw you right into the deep no, end with these giant guys with big armor, big shields, big weapons, and exactly. they just want to crush the crap out of you. And right? because I had no souls, I was kind of curious how much damage they would do. Hmm. Uh, I, you'll be happy to know that uh, some of the old Dark Souls tactics uh, will still work perfectly here, like circle uh, strafe. Circle strafe is the, is the key. If, <laughs> if you're in doubt, always hug an enemy right up in his crotch and just run around him in <laughs> circles, because that's usually the way it works. Perfect, yeah. Uh, but in the same works mostly for most of these guys, but they'll kill you in two hits right at the start. And I was oh, just wow. like, holy shit, this is insane. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned before that uh, the bonfires, the, the basic checkpoints in yeah, Dark Souls, yeah. they, they seemed a little bit closer together. Is that kind of like a, yeah. a difficulty balancing thing so, yet? Here's what I noticed. Uh, within my hour time in Dark Souls, and I'd only gone like into two or three different areas in that entire span of time, I found probably four bonfires Okay. And uh, they seemed a lot closer together in this game than they did in the first, but uh, when, you know, because you would recharge your Estus flasks, right? your, your health replenishing items. In this one, you don't start with any Estus flasks, and, um, but you do have life gems, which are kind of like uh, slowly regen your health, right? and you just kind of like crush them in your palm, because that's usually, for whatever reason, how so you use items. In so they're game. just a, a limited number of health items, yeah. sort of like how Demon Souls was. You, yes. you just had those herbs that you would eat. No, them. exactly. So they they kind of just went back instead of yeah. having the Estus now, flask. Now, I did find an Estus flask mm -hmm. at, at my third or fourth bonfire, but only one. So it's like, even though there are more bonfires to be able to travel between, right. Uh, that doesn't mean it's going to be any easier because you have far less health options, at least within the opening hours of the game, than uh, than you will <laughs> in the Dark Souls. Because right, you started with like three or five or something yeah. like that, or you at least got them very quickly. Totally. And so it was much tougher. Crazy. So uh, let's talk about bosses. Yeah. Uh, the Dark Souls series is known for its crazy bosses yeah, and yeah. how intimidating they are. And as soon as you see one, you walk through the the mist gates and. Yes. It, it, it's just crazy. So what did you see? In the okay, middle? so I passed a few fog doors that I was reluctant to go in, and I actually skipped most of them. Uh, after fighting a lot of those stone guys and getting through, I don't know, like five or six of them, uh, I, did, I did finally open a stone door, or a fog door at the, the bottom of this giant circular platform, and in it, right on the other side was a boss waiting for me. His name was Dragon Rider, and he's uh, like a big armored dude. He looked was he like riding a, a dragon, possibly? No, oh, no actually okay. he wasn't. Oh, wow. Perhaps at okay. one time he rode a dragon, but now he was mountless. Okay. And as soon as I walked through the fog door, he smashed me in the face with his halberd, <laughs> and I died and went right back to the bomb. Awesome. Part. So, but I did quickly sprint past all the enemies to get back down there. I mean, I had no souls by this point in the game. I'd only killed maybe five or six enemies. Right. And so I just ran past them, all the enemies over and over again, hoping to kill the boss before the end of my demo. Right. Uh, which, at the very final try, and again, this is a boss, use that old circle strafe tactic, worked pretty well on him. Uh, by the, I had like four minutes left in our demo, and they're like, okay, we're about to close it up. And uh, finally, in the last try, and I was entirely out of health items by this point, I hit him one last time and he went down and by the end I finally killed my first boss in Dark Souls 2. Awesome. So, so hour through, well, yeah. what do you think, what, what's your favorite part about it so far? Oh man, I, my favorite part is that you know a lot of people were really worried when they heard that the original producer was not going to be on Dark Souls 2 mm. uh, and he's been replaced by two producers. Uh, and there was a lot of fear that maybe the game wouldn't feel like Demon's Souls or Dark Souls and I can tell you it feels exactly like those games. 
And I, and I also love that the improvements to the engine means I experienced absolutely zero frame rate drops, awesome. which was a huge problem in those games right, when right. everything counts. So Sweet. I'm just really looking forward to exploring it more and seeing how kind of open it is. I, it felt very much like Dark Souls to me. So there it is, our first uh, hour impression of yep. Dark Souls 2. Uh, for, we're going to have some uh, questions of the week every week. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what, let's our kick question it off with this yeah. week. Our question if of the week this week. If you could have just one covenant, if you could join one covenant from the Dark Souls game in real life and get all the items and powers associated with that covenant, what one would it be? I think I'd go with the, the dragon, so oh, I could yes. you know, turn into a dragon. But, that would be you know, awesome. Your choice. Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, and do all those uh, awesome YouTube things that you yeah. do below. And uh, we'll I guess catch we'll, you guys yeah. next week. We'll see you next week. Oh, wow. What a nice day in Blight Town. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, if you want to quick, quick check out one of our other great shows right here. Oh, or there's another. Really, really awesome show right here. Click it quick. Oh, where's my moss?